Hello everyone, this is May Vu with Hot Life, Hot Love. And this Google Hangout is dedicated, every Tuesday I do a Google Hangout to help you with getting tips and wisdom on how to build a really hot life with hot love and maintain it that way so that you can be re replenished and filled up so that you can do your work in the world. Make more money, create more success, raise healthy kids, and have really yummy love. That's my goal in life. And today is a very fun and special conversation because, well, first of all, the topic, as you can tell, it's about ayahuasca. And uh, that could be some controversy into this topic. And it is such an amazing um, experience that both my guests, Alexis and Kimberly, and I have shared very recently in the Amazon in Peru. And we would love to share with you what, what went down over there in Peru. And also, what has the ceremonies with the ayahuasca has done for us since we've gotten back? It's almost been, it's not a whole month yet. It's been like two, two, three weeks that we're back. So I'd like to bring in Alexis and Kimberly. Welcome, Alexis. Let's start with you. Hi, everyone. <laughs> hi, hi, everyone. Um, wow, what to say about the experience that we shared together. Uh, well, let's just, say, let's just introduce them a little bit about who you are first, and then I'll bring Kimberly in, and then we'll, we'll dive into the, the yummy stuff. Okay, okay, good. So my name is Alexis Leva, and I work with 20 or 30 year old conscious entrepreneurs who are struggling with clarity of purpose, um, specifically in their career, what their true purpose is, and how to monetize their message, who they are, and also in terms of love life. Um, and yeah, so th that's who I work with. And Alexis, can you move back a little bit? Because when you get excited, you move in and it looks a little scary. And I don't want people to think that you are some weirdo guy that I brought on uh, my account. Because you're awesome and I want them to see your best. <laughs> Thanks, baby. I'm going to bring in Kimberly now. Kimberly, come on in. And you have to speak loud because Kimberly's actually in my house with me. And so to minimize the, the echo, she. Uh, her computer is muted. Come on in and tell them a little bit about yourself. Yes, thanks for having me here. So first off of that, um, I work primarily with six-figure women, six, seven-figure women, who want to keep more of the money they make and stop worrying about losing. So uh, I really help them manage the energy of their money. And so that's part of what we did in the Amazon, is we worked on manifesting and creating wealth without worry. And so that's what I did. Yeah, and that's what was so special about this trip was not only did we get to go to the Amazon, and not only did we get to work with four shamans <laughs> personally to, to, to escort us through this journey, and did we get to play with the ayahuasca, but we got to also have Kimberly all to ourselves teaching us how to ground ourselves with our money energy so that we can manifest and create amazing things in our life. And we had Alexis to hold the space and to translate for us and then to guide us. And Alexis became a semi-shaman because he was the only one that could speak both English and uh, Spanish. <laughs> and so during the ceremony, it was incredibly helpful to have Alexis tap into that energy and help us through that. So it was an amazing trip. And I'm just... I'm going to ask this question so that everyone can get a sense of what is ayahuasca and what does the process look like. So which one of you would like to take take a stab at the answer? I'll go. Okay. <laughs> Kimberly, I pick you. You go. So tell us what, what is ayahuasca. It's actually uh, two plants that have been combined. So there's the ayahuasca vine, um, which by itself does nothing. and out of the thousands, tens of thousands of species of plants in the Amazon, there's one leaf called the, the shakuna leaf that they use as an MAO inhibitor um, so that it helps the Amazon um, have its effect. So without those leaves, you have no experience. 
And what it really does is it, it helps you to access other dimensions. It helps you cross a veil, um, enter a portal, however you want to describe it. You know, everybody has a different experience. Even each journey for each person is very different. Mm -hmm. So, um, but that's how the ayahuasca basically works: is it helps you pass through other into other dimensions. Awesome. And Alexis, will you ex will you explain how the ayahuasca is made? Yeah. So, like Kimberly was saying, you mix the ayahuasca vine and the chacruna, and um, you mix it in a big vat. And it's boiled for hours. I think it's at least eight hours, and um, that's how it's made. The shaman does the shaman does does this. So they actually, like the day before or the day off, they would go to the jungle, chop it down, and then put them in this vat, and then they they sit there and boil boil it throughout the day, and they would be watching this thing, and it comes down to like this condensed thick. He would yeah. be the threat. <laughs> Mush. <laughs> it kind of reminded me of uh, Peter Jones makes a black <laughs> bean soup. <laughs> <laughs> it has almost that consistency. <laughs> yeah, it's not like tea. <laughs> and which one of us would like to say that it was disgusting? Let's yes. see. I want to see each one of us say that. Kimberly, how was that? <laughs> horrible. Horrible. And Alexis, how was that? It was horrible at first, and then once you know what to expect, you can just gulp it down without much fuss. Yeah. Nah, it was just disgusting. <laughs> I I was really trying to have a positive attitude about it, and by yeah. the fifth time, I was just like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not the part you look forward to. Yeah. Uh, well, let's speak about that. Let's talk about, I, in this country, I believe ayahuasca is considered illegal. Is that right? I believe so. We did something oh. illegal in Peru. It wasn't illegal there. Right, that's right. No, in Peru, this is a sacred medicine that the shamans use to access higher wisdom, to help them guide and live through this jungle life. You know, it's very dangerous to live in the jungle among all the animals and everything. And I don't know how this tied together and how they figure this out, but they figure this out. They're that connected to spirit, really. There you go. Yeah, it talks to them through. In fact, that's how yes. Tony actually found the, the plants that he's supposed to use. And in addition to that, the other plants that we used while we were in the Amazon came to him through dreams. So that's how the medicine talks to them. Yeah. So, so it's. I think we're so misunderstood. Uh, uh, whatever the the right word is, you know, we we just mi misinform and misunderstand what this this powerful medicine can do for us. And we all three of us, and all of us, um, we there were eight of us that were there together. We had amazing results and amazing experiences. And. This is not the first time, and lots of you you can see now lots of YouTubes of people talking about this, and they actually had a a lovely documentary that just been made too, and Graham Greene did a great um, TED talk about this. So there's so much information about this, and that's one of the reason why I feel really compelled to share our experience openly um, to my circle and and to the public because I'm like this stuff is good. We need to know about about wisdom and about how how we can access a much higher source of um, knowledge than just what our left brain can produce in our crazy mind. <laughs> Alexis, you want to jump in on this? I can tell you what to talk. Uh, yeah, I mean, to, to be honest, the way I relate to it, the way that the Shipibo tribe relate to it is, is as a sacrament. Mm. It's a plant medicine, and um, it's, it's a sacrament. If you approach it with respect, and you do the preparation, and you you do the dieta, so so that you're you're as detoxified and as clean in your body as as possible, um, combined with the other the other plant medicines that you take that help with detoxification of the bloodstream, um, they they help with the mental fog and also with the inflammation. 
if if you approach the ayahuasca in in a in a safe and well um, organized, well structured container, the the results of what's possible um, on on every level, spiritual, mental, um, physical, the healing possible and the insight possible is just exponential. That was such a a lovely, lovely explanation. Thank you for adding that part in the sacrament and the the sacredness of this. It was done with so much reverence and mm. so much attention and intention put into it. Um, it's held, you know, by by the shaman and the family and the tribe and all of us. It was so not recreational drug. <laughs> <laughs> so not, and given the taste of this thing and the intensity of it, I wouldn't even consider that recreational drug. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't think you can bastardize this as a recreational disassociative kind of experience. It's, it's not that kind of journey. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about the journey. What does a journey? What does it mean to have a journey? Who wants to take that one on? <laughs> Kimberly, oh. you want to go? I have a bit of a cough, so I... Okay, I'll let Alexis go for it. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, okay. So the journey, I mean, <clears throat> we're all on a journey. We're all on a human journey, and the intensity of that journey is very manageable often um, on our day-to-day. -day. But what ayahuasca seems to do is it seems to expand the intensity of feeling, of vision, of insight, of thought, so that you really have this moment in time where where time kind of dissolves and becomes less relevant and you're just left with the impact of who you are and decisions you've made and what your childhood was like and you get all these different perspectives none of which are totally right or totally wrong you just get this emotional perspective on your life that we're not usually um, that we're not used to having on a day-to-day -day level and um, so it's an interesting journey that's not normal for your everyday life where um, you you can release things that aren't serving you anymore beliefs you can see your belief system from different points of view see see how it's serving you see how it's not serving you and um, um, in, in my case, there were there were some emotions that I hadn't fully processed or or digested um, that were running the show, and um, by going to those places and feeling those emotions and um, having a more compassionate, all-inclusive perspective on things that happened in your life, you're able to release those emotions and fully process them so that they're not so that the past isn't designing your future and you can come back to a wholeness of self and then create from what you love now in the present. Awesome. That's beautiful, Alexis. I'm like, wow, I like his explanation. Yeah. <laughs> um, Kimberly, you want to go next or would, that, would you like me to go next? Well, no, I'll go. Okay. Um, it's really hard to talk about what Alexis said. He's so eloquent with his words. Well, I'd love and to hear your version of what is a journey, and then just like an overview of like what what did it touch for you, and then we'll we'll dive deeper. Yeah. Well, you know, every journey is so different that it's it's hard to it's it's really hard to put into words, and so that's why I was really impressed by everything Alexis had to say. So some of it is emotional, some of it is visual, and what I discovered since, um, because I went three years ago, and the biggest thing that I noticed <clears throat> afterwards was this sense of peace that has stayed with me um, three years later. I still have this peace that just never went away, mm -hmm. and so... However, that happened through the journey. It's really hard to explain. Uh, and also, there's things that just keep unfolding. One of the biggest things I noticed the last time that I went is that when I came home, I started to know things that I didn't know I knew. 
Mm. And so I like would have a new thought and it made total sense. And so this is continuing to unfold again this time. Um, and while it took me three years to process everything that I, you know, my whole journey was just, it was so big, um, it feels like this time the integration will be much faster. Mm. And so now I feel much more, um, everything is just more, I don't know if I want to say acute. Or is it the word lucid? Lucid, um, just I, I feel more uh, on track and on target and sort of dialed in with what I know. Mm -hmm. it's, I don't know. Mm. It's hard to explain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, why, that's why I brought two other friends up here. Yeah. And this is my second Google Hangout to try to explain this experience. And I think it's so important to try to grab words so that you all who are watching feel safe and feel like, oh, this is something that you can also experience and mm. that it is important to experience. This belongs to you, you know. So for me, what I think of how I would describe a journey, I'm a little bit more tactical. So the journey is like this. Um, so the shaman would prepare the, the, the tea, we call it, loosely. <laughs> this sludge tea. And Medicine. then yes. And then um and then we gather at night at eight o'clock in our white clothing. It's a ceremony. And we each have our own area where we where we lie down or sit or that's like our little area with our own plastic bucket to throw up in. Yeah. <laughs> Never leave home without a bucket, baby. <laughs> well, when ayahuasca is around. And even the shaman has a bucket because they too take some of the medicine so that they also travel along along the side with all of us. And so and then speaking of bucket and why do we need that? Um, the ayahuasca tend to, not always, but it once you once you take it, um, you will wait for a period of like perhaps 20 minutes, half an hour, an hour, all night. But it works through your body and then and then at some point it's done. <laughs> and it wants out. <laughs> and the faster to get it out is to like bend over and just let it out in that bucket. Purge, so, purge. Purge. So you purge it out and you usually don't eat very much that day so there's not it's not a messy vomit. It's just a very clean Oh, let's just hurl it out of there, and then and then usually what happened then is now you take off, like you just lie back and all these sensations start to happen and you can either see things or feel amazing. For me, a lot of it was feeling. I just felt amazing. I've never felt so in touch with myself, and even the word in touch with myself seems so limiting to explain to you right now because it was so much more like myself was so big and myself, my universe, everything. You know, like when people talk about we are one and we are the universe and all that stuff, like I kind of felt that finally, you know. So that was super exciting and and it was just so freeing and empowering. So much more than I could ever have ever experienced in my life. And I've done some major big empowering stuff to, you know, keep growing myself and keep accessing more of my humanity and my God, you know, but this one just really opened so much more access. Um, so that's, then you just like, you just lay there and you just journey and whatever comes, like Alexa said, you know, sometimes childhood stuff that you get in touch with or future stuff or big stuff, you know, like this one journey I just like went out and just started talking to the Palladians myself because I wanted to know what's the connection because we've been, you know, kind of bumping into each other all this time. So it was just like whatever you want to experience, it does, it can happen for you, both intentionally or just, it just happens. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll stop right there so that Alexis and, and Kimberly can jump in. Who wants in? I, I wanted to say I was next to you, May, and um, I think you purred for about three or four or five hours. I just I I sensed the the pleasure and the feeling and the the like just the warm, juicy 
realization space that you were in, just purring for like five hours, just being like, wow, you know, like what a what a pleasant space to be next to. <laughs> <laughs> and likewise, I got to be next to Alexis when he met God. <laughs> I was flirting with God, like you said. Yeah, can we, we tell that story? Because Alexis had a conversation with God, and it was so good. And it was like, I, wait, I, I asked permission, but you didn't even say yes, and I'm already starting to tell. <laughs> it's not even my, yeah, just, yeah, please do. It was just so amazing to... At first, I thought Alexis was connecting with some girl in his journey because he was like giggling and laughing and was so in love and with all this curiosity and mesmerization. And he was just like so just bending and flowing with whoever that he was with. And I'm like, oh, this is good, you know. And, and then it turns out that it was God that he was talking to, and it was just amazing to get to witness that. And you want to jump in and share some of that? <laughs> what, was, what was it like for you, Alexis? What was it like? Well, the, um, the, the profound, intimate connection with, you know, God or source or universe or creator, like, it, it's not so important how you define that all-encompassing benevolent energy but it was just like the conversation was essentially there was a lot of giggling because I was being humbled so much in my relationship with the creator and the creator was like you know you project a lot of stuff onto me and <laughs> you blame me for a lot of stuff when really all I am is unconditional love and then you blame me for when you beat yourself up for things and so I'm like, oh, oh. Okay, wait, we need to do an oh. <laughs> but it was like the most loving, tough love possible. And and so I'm I'm seeing this these mechanisms of uh, repression and beats beating self up and perfectionism not beating enough. And then the the creator essentially was like, you know, all I am and all you can expect from me is unconditional love and support. Anything else is you doing that to yourself. So just can we agree that I am just unconditional love. You are always in my womb. You're safe. You're protected. And go go from there on. And if you beat yourself up, don't beat yourself up about beating yourself up. So it wait, was. Wait, 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 wait. I I just have to like. I got to you know be next to you, but I've never heard the. The integration like that, I and mean, that was so beautiful. And I wanted all of us viewers to just have a moment to just feel the love of that and the clarity of that. You know, it's like, thank you, Alexis, for coming back and bringing a very simple, simple message with the Creator back to us. Mm. It's all unconditional love, and that's it. Anything else you put on top of it, it's your shit. It's not. <laughs> it's not God, and it's not the Creator. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Anyway, how about you, Kimberly? Is there a, a special moment or feeling that you'd like to, to share? Um, well, you know, there's, I have a, a different experience in that I was able to compare what happened to me three years ago when I went. So originally when I went to the Amazon, I went with the Children of the Sun Foundation, and I was one of seven chosen from the United States, um, out, it was a group of 12 to 15 of us. And, and this was out of 150 applications, so it was a really big honor to be with the, this, these people who were going into the Amazon to, um, there was stuff that I didn't even understand, some of the stuff that they were going to be doing. We were going to be avatars for this I am race, I, mean, I didn't even know what was going on. But they said ayahuasca, <laughs> and so I had the call. And so that's really an important thing that you should know, um, anybody who's listening, is that ayahuasca, you don't pick ayahuasca, it picks you, mm. it chooses you. So if you have any of this call or desire to want to commune or connect with ayahuasca, you should listen to that. Well, I, I think... 
I think we could safely say that if you're watching this and you continue to watch this, I think you've been chosen. <laughs> oh, by the way, this is actually an ayahuasca um, hand sewn tapestry. Tapestry yeah. that was done by the shaman's wife in Peru, and um, I just love the color of it, and and it it's all embroidered, and um, so that's what the ayahuasca plant supposed to look like through her uh, artistic impression, and that's the flowers mm -hmm. and the, and the leaves and uh, stuff, and this these little lines are. Um, Icaros. Yes, when we go on a journey, the shaman not only pour your tea for you, but he also sings this I, song, I, I, a series of songs in their language, in their deep traditional language, not even in Spanish, beyond to that, to people language. And it's called Icaros. And um, these are the, the little squiggly lines are the representation of the Icaros on the journey. And it actually feels like these lines, you know, it just kind of meander and go and it's just so beautiful and, and they pour their heart and their soul and, and their intention into their singing. You know, it's just like one of the most beautiful things you get to experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what were we talking about? <laughs> I'm talking about... <laughs> yes, and, and, and you were saying about if you've been chosen, you know, yeah. it, it's, it chooses you because it, a, a it is a big thing. And, you know, I think the ayahuasca picked me about five years ago, but I wasn't ready, so it took me a long time to get curious with it until mm -hmm. one day this year I'm like, Kimberly, what do you think about going to the Amazon? What do you think? And she's like, well, that's interesting that you said that because I'm thinking of posting a group. I'm like, I'm there. I don't care how much it is and when it is. I'm going to make it happen. The, the back story to this, though, is that <laughs> when I was in the Amazon three years ago, I knew I would be bringing a group back. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know when. And so when I came back and asked my spirit guides, how long is this uh, information going to keep unfolding? And they said three years. And so three years would have been actually this month. Wow. And so around October or November of this past year is when the call started coming back. Mm -hmm. And then May, and, and uh, so a few uh, unrelated people started asking about ayahuasca. So that's how I knew it was time to come back. And just well, that's a very uh, interesting... Aside from the, the cool story that you said, one of the reasons why I wanted to bring this, our experience to you, is that I'm always looking for ways to explain to you or share with you on how to access and create a powerful heart life with heart love in your life, right? And so being guided is so powerful. And I think a lot of times, especially us women, we doubt ourselves and we mm -hmm. don't listen. And we tend to look outside for the answer. Go inside and find your own answer, and mm -hmm. really learn to listen and be guided by your own guides, your own inner God, your own whatever you need to call it, right? And I love what you said, Kimberly, about how you, you know, were listening, and you know, the medicine teach you, and your guide teach you, and then you just follow the flow. When you learn to live life like that being guided and listening, it's easy. There's no yeah. fighting. Mm -hmm. That's what makes it super hot, right? It's super, it's easy. Alexis, what's in? What's it? Okay, so I, <clears throat> I'm 100% alignment with that. Um, a lot of times we get disconnected from our own passion, our, our own hot desires that, that, that guide us. And um, in the Amazon, I saw how a lot of times um, I'll have a desire, a deep desire, to create something or to go somewhere, or, or, and um, because of patterns, um, for some reason we we're disconnected or or we we bury those innate desires. So, so um, something like hot hot life, hot love. Um, a program that will get you reconnected to your passion, to, to what brings 
heat to your life, what your passion is, is indispensable because oftentimes we're disconnected from what we truly desire and what we truly want. So having been at Hot Life, Hot Love, um, it's, it's, it's a priceless event and it's a priceless... I mean, I'm promoting you, May, because I know you and I spent two weeks um, in deep work with you and so I'm 132 percent behind behind the the work that you offer. Thank you Alexis what a great segue. <laughs> I'll, I'll go with that. So I know that you might not be ready for the ayahuasca experience right away but you're on track for it <laughs> and if you want some support along the way or if you just want to get to know Kimberly, Alexis, and me, um, before you even consider something as big as the ayahuasca experience, really come to my two-day live event. I have one coming up on August 8th and 9th, and in those two days, it's designed to help you see your current pattern that's getting in your way of creating the life that you want and having the love that you want. Because a lot of my clients come to me because they're they're ready. They're ready to date again. They've been divorced. They've been putting their kids first, but now they're ready to to possibly think about having that man in their life. And it's scary, like heck, right? And they're, they're afraid to lose their freedom. They're afraid that they might get stuck in the same old pattern again. That they might end up being having to be the provider for this new guy or the caretaker for this old guy, you know, <laughs> and they, they have a lot of reason to block love and, and to push it away again. So if you are ready to inquire within <laughs> for such joy and happiness and abundance, and if you want a better business and more money in your life, come to the to Today event. It's August 8th and 9th. It's actually a free event. All I ask is a $97 seat deposit to commit your butt there so that you don't back out on yourself. So when you come on Saturday, you'll get your money back. It's all good. And Alexis and Kimberly will be there also on my leadership team supporting and guiding and, and loving all of you um, at the event. And you can ask us about ayahuasca and uh, anything else that... that that is important to you. Mm -hmm. um, how about you guys? Um, I heard words that you are bringing the shaman to the state instead of having us having to go to mosquito country and <laughs> live in, in huts and, and toilet non-functioning <laughs> thing. So tell us a little bit about, about what's possible in California. Who would like to do that? I Kimberly, yeah. Well, that was our original intention, and um, we've since discovered that the shaman is not as ready to come as we had hoped he was. So until that's the case, we have um, been recommended and highly recommended to some other shamans that we're checking out, and so when, as soon as we find the best one, we will uh, nail that all down. But I do have dates for a one-week retreat that will be in uh down by San Diego, and there'll be three ceremonies in that, so it's going to be a really intense week of deep dive transformation using the plant medicine as an assistant. And I'm going to say, I'm going to like highlight the intense. I don't, I didn't, it didn't feel like intense to me. I think, I think the word is not quite, because intense tend to bring up scariness and fear, yeah. for me it's more condensed, condensed, condensed I like that, right, right? Yeah. And, and, and focus because you're not doing anything else, yes. you're going to like prepare yourself, you take the medicine and then you rest the, the next day, right, and so it's condensed, right. yes, yes. And I would add it, it's profound as well, yes, yes. right, yeah. so when we add profound and condensed we tend to shorthand it as intense, but it's, <laughs> that's what intense means. <laughs> <laughs> Back to you, Kimberly. Go ahead. And yes, yeah, so um, the dates are going to be August 21st to the 27th, and details are unfolding. If you'd like more information about that, um, email. Ooh. Yeah, or me, <laughs> or or, or me. May. Yeah, <laughs> email somebody. Um, I'll give you my email address right now if that's helpful. Uh, my name Kim 
K-I-M at Kimberly Sherry, K-I-M-B-E-R-L-Y, S-H-E-R-R-Y dot com. And we'll answer any questions and then you can get on the list so that you can find out all the details as they emerge. And really, if you are interested, all you have to do is put a comment in the Facebook or the Google Plus um, box right there, and I'll make sure that you'll get to them. Yeah. No problem. And, and this is really um, more for people who maybe can't take, um, you know, three or four weeks off and who, um, you know, want something a little more short and condensed. But if you really want to saturate yourself, in the experience like we did, where you completely cut off from all technology, which is a huge purge. That's a, just a great thing in and of itself. But if you really want to saturate yourself in the experience, uh, Alexis is doing a journey. He's going back. We not let's, sure yet. <laughs> let, let's get Alexis to, to yeah. talk a little bit about what's your vision, honey. Well. So I love what you just shared, Kimberly, and if I would add um, this profound, um, condensed experience in, in, in San Diego is going to be on a beautiful 50-acre property, and it's going to be at the house of um, some dear friends, and all I'll say about them is that when people work with them or around them, magic happens. I mean, yes. people people meet their twin flame, people start six, seven figure businesses, it's it's magical. The work they're doing in this world is having lots of ripple effects. So that's that's the container in which this profound work will happen. Um, uh, so also, <clears throat> when I was in, like Kimberly, when I was there, um, I asked the creator, like what specific steps will you have me do so that I can do your work? And the message was, well, connect to your desire. What do you desire? And in the vision space, I had all these visions of bringing people that were ready for this profound experience to Casa Shipiba in the Amazon. So um, I will be leading a group back to, to the Amazon in early September. Um, so that's about three months, and there'll be an extension to go see some of the sites in Peru, like Machu Picchu being the most famous. Um, so that will be in September, um, and yeah, <laughs> it's uh. And you can you can talk to me about mosquito <laughs> strategies. <laughs> yes, yes. That way it, alive there. <laughs> Long, That's true. It's long pants. <laughs> it, it, All right. Let, yeah. Let's bring this to a close. Thank you so much for being here. It has been really wonderful to hear your words on how what what this meant to you and, and the impact on you. Um, it it touched me deeply, especially Alexis, when you shared what the creator mm -hmm. reminded you of. And mm. make the distinction for you about unconditional love, and that's all that he or she is responsible for. The rest is our stuff that we put on. Um, uh, what to say to, to to be complete? Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, look forward to future uh, Google Hangout. And again, I'd like to invite you to come to Hot Life Hot Love today live event in Pleasanton on August 8th and 9th of this year. This will be the last event for the year in California. If you want to do after that, it, you'll have to go to Sweden and join me there in, uh, in Sweden. So have a wonderful week, and I'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye. See you at Hot Life, Hot Love. Yay. See you soon.